Hello, everyone. This is Sherry Greenhouse, Managing Partner of Serum Exchange, and I'd like to welcome you to today's Tech Tank, where we're going to look at uh, demonstrations, and we are going to discuss all different sorts of technologies of breakthrough innovations. A couple of housekeeping items before we begin. This webcast is being recorded. We'll make sure to send you a link. Usually takes about 24 hours for the recording to generate. So you will receive both a link that will let you look at the recording, and you're always welcome to share that recording with others in your organization. And right next to that recording will also be a PDF of the slides. If you look at your console, you will see a slide deck, you'll see the panelists, and you'll see a Q&A. We will have a Q&A at the end of all of the presentations, but if you have any questions during each of the presentations, go ahead, put those questions in Q&A, and yours will be one of the first that we ask. There's also at the very end of all of the presentations, a brief survey will pop up, takes about 30 seconds or so. Let us know what you thought of these presentations, any comments, anything at all that you have. So today you're going to hear from three companies, Jakarta, Nice, and UJet. And each one of our presenters have 15 minutes to talk about why their solutions will absolutely delight your customers. And we are going to be doing screen shares with each of these presenters. The first person that's going to do the presentation is Corinne dabowski Ebrahami, Project Product Manager for Jakarta, leading the Bot Framework solution. Prior to Jakarta, Corinne worked in product management positions in leading companies in the high-tech industry. Her expertise includes NLP technologies, chatbot solutions, UI and UX thinking, and product launching. So, Corinne, I'd like to turn this over to you. Thank you, Sheree. Thank you, Sheree. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, do you hear me? Yep, you okay. are coming through loud and clear. Okay, great. So uh, today I want to talk uh, mainly about what makes a chatbot exceptional. Um, I'm, uh, as Sheree said, I'm from Jakarta. Jakarta is uh, out there since uh, 1990, and we are leaders in everything related to contact centers and improving uh, agent uh, work and customer experience. But I want to talk mainly about chatbots and what is there out, what there is out there. So we hear a lot of testimonies about grand failures uh, related to chatbots. If it's uh, Tay in 2016, uh, a chatbot that was uh, made by uh, Microsoft in Twitter, it was shut down after 16 hours because she became uh, very racist and developed a vicious uh, paranoia. And they just shut her down because it was too bad. And lately I heard about uh, the Cody, Cody Virtual uh, Assistant uh, by Telstra that had the worst uh, reviews ever, I think, about virtual assistant. So you could uh, read reviews like uh, virtual more an idiot and something, all uh, all kinds of uh, very bad uh, reviews by uh, consumers. So obviously when we talk about chatbots, we know that there are a lot of solutions out there that are failing and we don't want to be there. We are always asking ourselves what makes a chatbot uh, exceptional, what, make, what makes it good. So in my opinion, I think that it's not only about the NLP or, era or AI. I think that this is only one aspect. Of course, I'm sure that Microsoft, for example, who had Thai, have 
a great NLP capabilities and wonderful AI capabilities, but but still they had to shut down the um, the bot. So when I'm looking on chatbots that are supposed to be uh, consumer facing, they're supposed to be to give uh, answers to uh, to consumers. The important question, in my view, is are they really capable of giving the, the consumer a resolution? Can they give him an answer not only to his question like, when is your office open, but to do, uh, to do actions uh, like a real agent can do? So if I look on the, pl the solution platform that uh, Jakarta had, we have a lot of solutions related to agents and uh, self-service uh, for, for consumer. And I'm going to focus on the chatbot uh, solutions that we have. So what do we have that makes a bot exceptional? First, we are taking the approach of being NLP agnostic. I can integrate basically with any NLP engine. Uh, we're working with Dialogflow, we're working with Watson, with AI, so we're working with best of breed. And then we are wrapping the NLP engine with capabilities of integration and automation to any backend system uh, so it can be leveraged across all channels and can be reused very easily. We have very powerful capabilities of integrations and automating um, flows of, agenti, of agents, automating uh, even actions on um, green screens that, that don't have APIs. Another thing that we do the integration and the NLP service is wrapped uh, by business agility capabilities. We have a designer that enables you to do any rich UI um, elements to the, to the chatbot. It is low coding, even no coding, that enables the business to have more control on the chatbot rather than to rely all the time on the IT team. So I don't need uh, to rely on IT teams to develop and write code. I can use the business team to add more intent, to add, uh, change the response we want to give to the user. So we empower the business team uh, by using our platform. The last thing is that everything can be reused. I built the bot once and I can use it in multiple channels. The, the logic behind it is the same and I can uh, leverage it to any channel I want to use, whether it's a voice channel, text channel, a chat within a website or Facebook Messenger. So how does it work in a high level? I have an input that can come in either from any text channel or from a voice channel uh, by the end user. This input is moving forward to our bot controller. The bot controller is basically a feature that decides always what's going to be the next step. So. When I get the input from the user, it's naturally going to the NLP engine. The NLP engine is giving me back the analysis he has. And then the bot controller decides whether the response from the NLP engine is going back to the end user, or maybe I want now to have some kind of business logic. Of business logic. Uh, to use the rule to go and check uh, data from any backend system, CRM of the organization. Maybe uh, the user wanted to update his home address. Uh, the NLP engine understood that was his intent, but now if I want to update it, I need to integrate with the CRM to to give the the new address and to make sure that 
in all channels that were needed to, uh, needed to update it, I did the update and then response back to the user with uh, a response that says, your new address was updated, how can I help, can I help you with anything else? So this is how it works uh, in high level. Okay, so uh, I think the best is always just to see uh, what we are doing. And I'm going to share with you uh, a demo that I have created. Uh, it's for a travel agency, and we have Joe, let's say. He uses uh, DCM Travel to plan his travel. And today, Joe is in uh, Denver Airport with his family, returning from a vacation. And... Since the since the the flight was cancelled, someone from from the travel agency just sent him an SMS, and I'm going to share with you my phone. Okay, so here, let's say I'm uh, Michael, or I'm Karen, and I got this uh, SMS. And the SMS said, they're telling me that uh, there is uh, a problem with my flight, and maybe I, can, I need to uh, change uh, my uh, travel. So I click on the link. And, okay, now I have entered the chatbot, and I am reading the message that I got from DCM Travel, um, and they are letting me know that my flight was canceled, so I need to find a new uh, flight, not only for me, but also for my family. So they have already my my uh, contacts and all the data they need, and they are offering me, offering me two flights, today and tomorrow and let's say today tomorrow is better for me i have selected an op this option and they're saying to me okay uh, i have booked uh, your your seats uh, and your family is sitting next to me um, unfortunately your usual marriott hotel is booked they know me they know my preferences I can use it. Uh, one of our strong capabilities in Jakarta is the ability to always work with backend systems like CRM and to extract a lot of data. And then I can influence the flow of the user and make it uh, really personalized. So uh, now they're offering me to uh, maybe order another hotel. So I see I have Renaissance here, I have another option. And I select this one, uh, and then they ask me, would you like to book a rental car? Obviously, I'm in the airport. I need to go to the hotel, and then uh, in tomorrow morning, I need to go back to the airport. So I might want to check uh, how much it is going to cost me. So uh, they know uh, I'm with my family, so they offer me, like, full-size car. I have several options here. They, they look quite expensive. And I want to ask... Sorry, something happened to my phone. Okay. Um, I want to ask, is it cheaper to... Uber. Uh, and so they are telling me, click right Guru to get an estimate, estimated price for Uber or taxi. So when I click on the right Guru, 
he just opens me uh, a new tab and during the uploading uh, we're not just opening this website we're also transferring the information the relevant information of uh, what is the origin and what is the destination so the client uh, could get the actual prices. He, he does not need to, to do the search by himself because I was able to send over the data. So I see the options and I don't want to use Lyft and Uber seems a little bit expensive and maybe I... Um, where is... Okay, so maybe I want to uh, rent a car after all. Uh, okay, let's say after I did all this, I still want to talk with an agent. So um, I want to talk with an agent. And nice, I got three types of options. Uh, I can have a chat, I can call, I can receive a call back, and I want to select the chat now option. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is this is my phone. Uh, this is uh, a chat platform that an agent in call center sees. So the agent uh, sits there and he's, he has a queue of incoming uh, chat and he sees that he got now a new request of a chat so he clicks on start chat. He's waiting and okay, what he can see now is the history of conversation with this user. So he knows what the user did that he uh, booked the flight, that he ordered the hotel. He knows the whole story. He has the context, and he can start from there. He doesn't need to ask the, the user those questions again. He has all the information. The user here uh, got a, um, a message. Okay, one of my UN associates will be right with you. So let's say now I am the agent, and I will write the user something. How can I help you? And here you can see it on my phone. How can I help you? And then I can continue as the user, um, say uh, something like, I wanted to know if you will pay for the hotel. And that's why the, the agent can continue the chat uh, with, the, with the user. So this is the demo. Um, and what I want to show you now is how we do it. So in this demo, I have used uh, Dialogflow NLP engine. Dialogflow is uh, by Google. I have defined all the intents. Intents are the user's goals and all the entities within Dialogflow. And in a very uh, simple and quick way, I have synced all the data I have defined in, uh, in Dialogflow into Interact Platform. How I do it is a very in very simple. I have here the section of intelligent assistant. I have, for example, the DCM travel. You can see I took the developer token from a uh, dialog flow. And by clicking this button, I can sync all the data that I have already defined in dialog flow. Now, when I look on the details, I can see all the intents I have defined in dialog flow that are connected to my business logic flows. So um, it's very easy to do it. And uh, 
And now I want to show you how, how do I define a business logic flow. Karen, um, excuse yeah. me one minute. We're going to need to wrap up and go on to okay. the, the next couple. Okay, I'm uh, wrapping up. Okay, so uh, it's very, very, very easy. Um, I can... Uh, I can do it in a very quick uh, way. I can uh, design any uh, any f business flow that I want. Intent flow for conversation. Here I created a flow, and now I can uh, define what's going to be the next step. I can do rich UI elements like form. I can drag in a complex um, element like choices. I can obviously redefine the labels. I can uh, select the type of uh, display, whether I want it as drop down or buttons or anything like it. And then I can test everything here in my simulator in a very easy and slick way. And this is it. So I hope uh, you succeeded to get a glance on what we do at Jakarta. Our goal is to enable the process of, of fulfillment to be much easier, much slicker and to empower all the chatbot um, capabilities. Thank, Thank you, me. Corinne. And now we're going to go on to our next presenter. Adam Aftergut with NICE is a product manager on the WFO team. Adam has over six years of experience in the enterprise software industry. He's responsible for product marketing strategy and sales enablement in connection with WFO product categories. So, Adam, I am now going to pass the ball over to you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sherry. Uh, here we go. Excellent. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today, and thank you for that intro, Sherry. I'll jump uh, right into this, and uh, we'll breeze through a series of slides and views of our product. Um, I think it'll uh, be quite engaging for you. So, uh, my presentation is about adaptive performance management, which is uh, NICE's latest newly released and uh, integrated solution for driving employee performance and engagement in the contact center and in the back office. Uh, today I'll be showing you a series of views of the product which contain a lot of uh, leading edge and differentiated technology designed to address the challenges of very dynamic uh, contact center and back office environments. Uh, before jumping into the key presentation, just a very quick plug here that for the second year in a row, um, NICE was designated as the number one uh, leader in Gartner's Magic Quadrant for workforce engagement management. The reason this is relevant to the adaptive performance management product is that workforce engagement management is actually Gartner's renamed category for what they had previously called workforce optimization, and they brought the word engagement in there as a way to define and emphasize this category as being increasingly focused on the individual employee, and this adaptive performance management product is purpose-built to personalize the experience for the employee in both the contact center and the back office. Now, just laying out a framework for you before I get into views of the product, I wanted to provide sort of a real-world example of how to look at uh, performance management and engagement, really. So if we take a real-world example of a goal that any of us might have in our personal lives, such as running a marathon, we consider how do we set up that goal and how do we pursue that goal. So, you know, we have the goal which we set and which we can quantify, in this case, a marathon and, and its, uh, its distance. Um, and then we have a variety of metrics that are used to both define that goal and then also to measure our progress towards that goal along the relevant dimensions. 
Further, we have a series of resources such as, um, you know, a treadmill, weights, uh, you know, uh, fresh vegetables that are part of our diet. These are resources that we use to drive those metrics towards the goal. And then we have programs which apply the resources in such a way that we optimize the pursuit of that goal. And naturally, you know, we can have any number of goals and, you know, you have people with different uh, fitness levels, skill levels. Uh, so any type of performance program would ideally be optimized for the characteristics of the person that's pursuing the given goal. Now, moving on, one more slide before we get into the contact center environment. The way we can expand out this concept is thinking of it in the context of a team where things get a little more complex. So here, we're talking about a goal at the collective level where we have people that uh, occupy different roles on the team, uh, different responsibilities, and so they themselves might have their own unique goals, which when taken together as a team with each individual, uh, the team can drive towards that common goal, as you see here. So just laying out, again, the metrics, the resources, and the various programs individualized for each member of that team to drive towards the common goal. Now, one more. I think this is the last one before getting into the product. Let's relate this to the contact center environment or the back office environment. So here we have different team members who could be uh, uh, focusing on uh, different types of calls if it's the contact center, and you might have different role types. So, for instance, an agent and a supervisor naturally would be measured along different metrics, might have a different set of tools to assist them in their daily activities and drive towards their goals, and different programs which bring it all together for them. So that's really the framework. And then within this framework, as you can see at the top of this slide, uh, we are going to show you how we relate the components of the adaptive performance management product to this uh, very real-world way of looking at uh, behavior transformation, engagement, and so forth. So here we are actually looking at the adaptive performance management uh, goal-setting module. This would typically be accessed by say, an admin or a director, somebody with um, uh, permissions to actually, uh, you know, define the goals for uh, employees and teams. And this is, um, this is a wizard where you would set up in a very user-friendly manner highly sophisticated goals, and this is the alignment part of goal setting where you take that high-level, you know, team-level or organizational-level goal and it can cascade down to the individual team member. And so what you're seeing here at the top half of the screen is um, the parent-level goal, if you will, meaning the high-level goal. And what you're seeing at the, at the bottom half of the screen here are these derivative goals which roll up to the high-level goal. So we can basically uh, set a goal based on underlying statistics. What you're seeing here is a, is a statistical distribution. And you can set a goal at a high level, and then it shows you at the component level uh, of those derivative goals where uh, that uh, particular agent or the team would need to be along those various components in order to achieve that high-level goal. Now, moving on to driving that goal, we're going to go through a variety of uh, resources. First, we'll just look here at the metrics. As you can see, this is a uh, very modern-looking user interface and adaptive performance management. This is a, the supervisor's view. Uh, by the way, this is a product that's been released, uh, so this is, uh, this is real. Uh, this is out there. We just uh, recently uh, released version 2.0. And so what you're looking at here with the metrics tab being selected is just high-level metrics. Naturally, we can get uh, more granular, but you see very user-friendly. And then there's a tab on the left-hand side you see there called Insights, where uh, there are being very personalized insights proactively delivered to the supervisor based on what the supervisor needs to know. We'll see that in just a bit. But we looked at the metrics at a high level. Now, if the supervisor or manager uh, wants to dig deeper, they can go into a root cause analysis dashboard. This uh, dashboard is powered by our advanced reporting engine. And uh, as you can see, uh, for those familiar with um, advanced reporting products, this is an interactive type of uh, report 
where you can drill through to different components for different team members. It's um, you know an interactive uh, visualization, so you can pretty much drill through and drill across without leaving the single root cause dashboard page. Um, just kind of breezing through here. I should go back here. Just another comment is that within these root cause dashboards for, of course, any type of KPI, you know, you've got your AHT root cause dashboard, you've got your CSAT root cause dashboard, adherence, and so forth, you can directly from this root cause analysis get into actions within the adaptive product. So you can drive coaching, you can drive a knowledge trivia, which is an e-learning feature within the product. You can drive group coaching straight out of these. Um, I don't have it in the view right here, but it, you can click through to, um, to initiate uh, coaching or any of those activities straight out of the root cause page. So here's an example. This is a view from the agent side. If the agent were to receive a knowledge trivia quiz, uh, so this is, you know, an interactive uh, e-learning component, as I mentioned, and this could be standalone delivered to the agent as a quiz, or it can be easily integrated into a coaching package uh, so that the agent um, is, is getting coaching and something like this quiz could be used as part of the prep for a coaching session and so forth. So there's a lot of flexibility there with the adaptive product. Then moving forward, we have uh, in the adaptive uh, performance management product uh, the capabilities to measure the impact of these various activities that are occurring in the product. So we can measure the impact, for instance, here of, of coaching activities and see, you know, whether the coaching activity has driven up a KPI, has driven up a KPI or not and uh, which supervisor seems to be, you know, running effective coaching sessions and on which topics and so forth. Um, this is just a view of um, one component of uh, the gamification uh, option within the product uh, where we have um, gamified goals in the product, which are often called pursuits. Those are associated with uh, points, and then to close the loop on that cycle of incentives for uh, the employee, the employee can redeem the points they earn through these gamified goals, achieving their goals, or, for instance, completing trivia, which can also be associated with points. So they can redeem those points for prizes, or if the employer doesn't want to give out monetary prizes, a, uh, an employee or an agent could redeem points for, say, a privilege like a preferred parking space or uh, jeans day or half day off and what have you. I mean, pretty much the, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of uh, what, what our customer wants to set up in the gamification uh, marketplace. Now, uh, lastly here, in terms of um, the cycle of uh, insights and actions that I've just provided a snapshot of today, we can see how this comes full circle where the, the goal is, of course, achieved. That is uh, the purpose of, of this solution. And you're seeing here now the insights tab, uh, this is a, in the director's view, where a personalized insight is delivered uh, to the user. In this case, uh, again, the director who, seems that, who sees that uh, her uh, underling, the, the supervisor that reports to her, her uh, that person's team has achieved you know, their team level um, CSAT goal. So this brings it full circle. So again, the, the solution is aligning goals of individuals towards a common objective and then it's driving the goal through a, a variety of very, um, very powerful capabilities, both on the um, reporting side as well on the action-oriented side, such as with the coaching and the trivia and the gamification and so forth. So with that, I conclude. And uh, as I said, the product is out there, and we're certainly very happy to discuss it further uh, with uh, customers who believe this is a fit for them. And I'll hand it back to you, Sherry. Thank you, Adam. And now we are going to go to our final presenter for today, Jordan McAvoy, VP of Marketing for UJet. As VP of Marketing, Jordan focuses on demand generation, product marketing, marketing communications, field marketing, and awareness. Prior to joining UJet, he served in executive roles at Funbox, a Forbes net billion dollar company, and Demand Force which was acquired by Intuit in 2012. So I'll now turn this over to Jordan. 
Awesome. Thanks, Sherry, and thanks, everybody, for, uh, for joining today. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about myself since Sherry just gave me a, a lovely introduction. What I will say is I'm very passionate about how technology can help businesses provide better experiences to their customers. And today we're going to talk about UJet, which is a real-time communications platform, and how, how we're doing just that. I'm going to start with a, with a uh, statement that customer support is the most intimate form of a brand experience. Right? You think about the relationships that you have with goods and services and the companies that provide them. Uh, you've had really great experiences when it comes to getting customer support, and that's probably uh, solidified brand loyalty. You become a much more valuable customer to them. You've probably also had experiences where uh, maybe they've fallen a little bit short, and it shaped your perception and your view of that company and also your propensity or likelihood to, to work with them in the future. And so it's critically important for us to, to just think about customer support as the tip of the spear when it comes to uh, relationships with customers. The reality is, is, you know, we have room for improvement here. So $62 billion is lost each year due to poor customer service. And at UJet, we actually believe that it doesn't need to be that way. So our focus is how do we work with the, the businesses that are our customers to help them provide great customer service and really make that their differentiator. And the focus for us is, you know, how can we use technology and how can we uh, marry that with what modern customers are looking for and deliver delightful customer experiences. We also think about agents and supervisors in this equation and how can we empower them to really solve the problems that customers bring to them in a more timely fashion. So before I jump into getting into the product, I want to just throw three kind of core, uh, core ideas out there when it comes to how you can understand today's customer. One, we're living in a smartphone era. Two, the on-demand economy is really shaping customer expectations. And three, customers are more empowered than ever to spread, uh, to spread the, the sentiment of their interactions with your business. And you need to be very mindful of it because it can be incredibly powerful and it can also create issues. There are more than 3 billion smartphones floating around the planet. You can think about a smartphone as a supercomputer that lives in your hand. It can do a tremendous, uh, a tremendous amount from a technology perspective. And the reality is, is as the ubiquity of smartphones grows, there are more and more households that are becoming cell phone only households, and that becomes their primary device and their primary mode of communication. So as you think about how customers are contacting you, you need to be mindful of this macro trend. The second thing I want to bring up is the on-demand economy. It's here and it's resetting customer expectations for what service level should be. This isn't just for millennials. This is something that is gaining rapid adoption across all demographics, all ages, all geographies. We're just getting started there. It's a, uh, it's a $57 billion market, and we're only about 10% of the way into it. But think about, think about your, um, your access to the on-demand economy. So I have some uh, logos up here. You know, I can do my banking through a banking app. I can get a ride somewhere and get access to transportation through, uh, through an app. I can get groceries delivered to my house. I can access media. If I have an issue and I need to schedule an appointment with a doctor, I can go on and research and figure out who I think is the best person to solve my need, and I can also schedule an appointment. And if after that I need to pick up a prescription, I can actually manage all of that without ever leaving the palm of my hand. And so, again, this is really reset customer expectations for what service level should be. And the last thing I would say is your customers are empowered. And they have a strong and a loud voice when it comes into how they are connecting with the broader world. They have social networks like Facebook, which already has billions and billions of users, uh, where they can tap into their social graph. We have networks like Twitter, where people are interacting both with their, uh, their direct connections as well as a much wider audience. We have review sites where people can go and they can leave uh, their experiences for others to see in an asynchronous fashion. And we, as companies who serve customers, we really need to think about how the voice of the customer can have a direct and immediate impact on your brand. 
And it's very important for us to realize that because, the, again, if you think about the customer service experience being that most intimate form of a brand experience, well, you know, two seconds after that, that phone call ends or that chat ends, somebody can take that experience and they can publish it out for hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, sometimes even millions of people to see. So at UJet, we believe, one, support shouldn't be thought of as a cost equation. It needs to be thought of as an experience equation. And two, if you do that, there is real business benefit. 70% of customers say they'll be more loyal. 42% will recommend your company to others. 49% will use you more frequently. And nearly 70% will spend more money with you. There is a great benefit to providing great experiences to your customers. So we believe there's a better way to be engaging with your customers. Um, it's called UJet. And I'm going to introduce you to UJet. So one, UJet is a real-time communications platform, and our goal is to make it as easy as possible for customers and businesses to connect to get problems solved faster. We don't believe there's a one-size-fits-all solution, but we believe that we can help customers uh, and the agents that are serving them navigate those waters more effectively. We approach this from a few core principles. One is we have a simple and intuitive interface. Two is we want to make it flexible and easy to use, but we also know that reliability should be a guarantee and not an option. And in today's world, security should be top of mind for everybody. We're both SOC 2 and HIPAA certified. And our platform delivers best-in-class return on investment. From a super high level, we have a cloud-based interface that uh, agents and supervisors engage in. Uh, you can connect over voice and chat through both uh, web and app, as well as through a traditional phone line. Um, and we have a really robust backend infrastructure with modern APIs that let you do things like tap into uh, reporting data sources so you can get access to data in real time. So I'm going to jump into uh, to our product demo to get started. And uh, when you log in, this is, this is what you would see. This is a demo portal. Um, but again, you just a real-time communications platform, and what we're doing is we're trying to make it easier for problems to be solved. We're an enterprise-grade solution. We're cloud-based. We can serve uh, contact centers with hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of agents. Uh, but we were built with uh, today's customer in mind. We were also built understanding that there are major friction points and pain points with existing solutions today. Uh, so, again, reliability should be a guarantee. It should not be an option. Uh, system compatibility, when you think about all the various systems that you use, we actually have taken a more holistic approach. We want to be a single solution that allows you to navigate those different waters when it comes to the customer experience. So you can actually uh, consolidate a lot of what you're doing directly into the UJet solution. Direct out-of-the-box CRM integrations. It's very, very simple and intuitive to use, which I'll show you in a second. So training times can be reduced. And again, we're SOC 2 and HIPAA, HIPAA certified. And so, you know, in today's uh, modern environment, thinking about InfoSec and your compliance is just, it's a, it's a critical function. So I'm in the dashboard right now. This is what a supervisor or, uh, or an administrator would see. I'm going to show you three things today. I'm going to show you uh, IVR. I'm going to show you a mobile experience because, again, we have, uh, we have our mobile SDK, which embeds directly into your native uh, mobile application. And then I'm going to show you our reporting interface. So just to get started, uh, to get into our IVR uh, queue setup, I just click on settings. I click on queues. Now, with one click of a button, I can see the existing menu structure. Again, this is all done in real time. There's no IT person or developer that you need to call in order to do this. So if I want to add a new item to the queue, I'm simply going to go in, move this up, and I'm going to add a new item. We'll call it CRMX or CRM Exchange. We're going to call it UJet. When I click Done, now, when my customers call in, after I assign some agents to it, so I'm going to put our sales team on this one. And uh, now when I assign agents to it, when my customers call in uh, and they select 
CRMX, and UJet, uh, they're going to be directly routed to our, our sales team. And so please call in and talk to our sales team. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But um, this is how simple it is to set up a new IVR queue. Again, no longer do you need a, a, uh, an IT person or a developer to kind of get in there and help with configuration. It's really intuitive. It's drag and drop. Um, you can get somebody trained on this in minutes, not hours or days. The next thing I want to show you is actually the mobile experience. So let me go back here. Um, so just to set this up real quick, uh, on the right here, this is actually my cell phone. And uh, the way you should imagine this is I'm a customer and I'm calling into a support organization. On the left here, this is, uh, this is a Zendesk instance, a ticketing system, and so the support agents on the other side would be using that. Um, this is the UJet widget that sits inside of there. So if I open up my phone, you know, I would be inside the app, say my banking app or my, um, my uh, uh, online ordering app. I would click contact customer support. I get into the queue, you see that CRMX is inside of the queue. It's something that we added. If you make updates to the queue, it will manifest itself in a real-time update in what the customer sees. When I click Next, I'll get the submenu of UJet. And so now as the customer, I have three options. I can either chat, I can schedule a call if I need to get called back at a more convenient time, or I can call now. So I'm just going to click Call Now. And so you see here what the agent would see on their desktop is they see um, the UJet widget showing big red button, click to answer, target pickup time. Now this starts pulsing because uh, I'm past my SLA. So I'm going to go ahead and answer that, put that on mute. Um, and so now customer and agent are connected. The cool thing about UJet is we have these things called smart actions, and smart actions allow you to reduce a lot of these friction points that both extend average handle time as well as cause uh, in an inconvenience for the customer or things that make, uh, make the customer experience much less pleasant. For example, instead of asking first, last, uh, last four digits of social security, mother's maiden name, and last two addresses, I can simply click Get verification, we do facial recognition, you could do thumbprint identification uh, like you do to open up your cell phone, uh, or you could use the touchpad. Um, again, these are friction points that just add time to the call, and we believe that we can use technology to solve a pretty, a pretty uh, you know, standard issue, which is why do I have to go through this whole rigmarole of explaining all this stuff multiple times? Um, in this example, let's say I received an order from a retailer and uh, I thought the, the, um, the object was damaged. So the agent can say, no problem. You know what I'd love? I'd love to just uh, get a photo from you so I can pass it on to my quality assurance team. So they're going to click request the photo. The customer then is going to click take photo. I just took a photo from my cell phone, which you can see on the right side. I'm going to send that along. And here in the agent, uh, in the agent ticketing system, we can actually see that that photo has come through. And I'm able to pass this on to my, uh, my QA team to show them that, hey, the corner of this table actually came through damaged. And then I can tell the customer, really sorry about that. We're going to get a new one shipped out to you, and I will, uh, I'll also be sending you a return label. Customer says, great, great experience. We're going to click done. Now it's wrap-up time. We're also going to track that in the system. But on the customer side, what you can see is you can see we're actually capturing CSAT. And so you know, I'm going to say this is a five-star experience. My problem got resolved very quickly. When I submit, the other thing we're, we're doing is we're tying it into social. And so here this customer can actually share the great experience that they had over either Facebook or Twitter and extend out this great positive experience to their social network and help with brand building. So 
So that's the mobile experience. I have one more thing that I want to show you very quickly, um, which is our dashboard. And so I want to wrap up here with the dashboard. This is really, um, you know, this is the hub of your call center operation. It allows you to manage it. And what we provide you is we provide you with real-time access to uh, the data that you need in order to run the operation. So you can go through this and you can see how you're performing from a service level perspective. You can see what wait times look like, abandon rates, uh, get access to your average CSAT ratings, um, all sorts of information that allow you to identify trends, diagnose issues. Um, we have things in here like our hot issues section, which you know, if you see a spike in a certain queue, you can actually go and assign more agents to that queue. To, uh, to address real-time peaks or challenges that are coming through. And the other cool thing, and I don't have time to go through this today, is you know, many of these elements are clickable. You can get in and you can get uh, another level of detail on that specific KPI. So you know, this information is very robust. The greatest part about it is there's no data engineer or SQL queries required to get access to it. It's in real time. It allows you to act immediately. You know, you're not seeing issues that come up today and then you get reports tomorrow that help you identify that there was an issue the day before. And the other thing is we also have uh, APIs that allow you to get access to data in real time for either your reporting or your BI tool. And so it's a very robust way for you to actually be able to look at what's going on in your call center um, or your contact center, look at it for insights, and actually be able to act on what those insights are in real time. So that's a very quick overview of UJET. What I would say is that's a very small portion of what we do. If, that, if those three areas that I focused on looked interesting to you, we would love to talk to you. Um, we do have a case study, which uh, I'll share the link with you on the next slide, uh, on one of our customers' spot here, which is the number one parking, uh, parking app in the U.S. We were able to save them 50% on their telephony expenses and help them uh, do a great job when it come, came to uh, call reduction for abandoned calls, as well as reduction in, um, in training and overhead and per minute charges on the voice side. Um, the URL is available on the screen. If you're interested in talking to somebody at UJET, uh, you can go to getujet.com to reach out to us or fill out a contact us form or just email us at, us at hi at getujet.com. And we'd love to talk to you about your needs and, and how we might be able to help. Thank you, Jordan. We have just a couple of minutes left for um, maybe a question or so a piece. So um, let's see, uh, Jordan. Um, while you were um, talking, <laughs> somebody put a question in. Now, I'm going to ask each one of you, keep your answers because we're getting short of time, just up down to a minute each. So this is going to be a little bit challenging. But there's a lot of talk about omni-channel. How does UJET help to create that omni-channel approach to customer support? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, um, we have a fundamental belief, which comes from our founder and CEO, that uh, the channel should really be dictated by the complexity and the urgency of the query. And so, again, I said this earlier, we don't believe in, in a one-size-fits-all approach, and that's the reason why we offer a few different options for customers to be able to engage and interact with, um, with a support organization. So, you know, when we think about omnichannel, we think about, you know, what's the issue at hand, and is that something where a simple chat could help resolve an issue? Is it something that, you know, that's not urgent at all and is a fairly general question where maybe they just email in and we integrate directly into the, into the general ticketing system for email? Or is it something where, you know, I have my wallet stolen and I need to get in touch with an agent at my bank and I need to do that right away and I don't want to have to jump through 20 minutes of hoops? And so, you know, how can we create an environment where the complexity and the urgency of the of the query actually gets the customer to resolution faster? And, you know, that's really how our system has been set up, um, as well as reducing the distance when it comes to sharing of information. Great. Thank you. 
Um, Adam, there was a question that came in when you were speaking about integration requirements. So do you have any specific integration requirements or data requirements when you're using the adaptive product? Uh, it's a great question. So our product is architected from the beginning to be agnostic with respect to uh, sources of data. So basically, you know, naturally NICE has a pretty broad portfolio of products and we have uh, predefined integrations that really uh, streamline the integration uh, process uh, when integrating with other NICE products, but certainly from the outset, uh, the product is uh, architected to take in data from any source system, whether that's uh, speech analytic data, uh, desktop analytic data, uh, data from the ACD, WFM, so on and so forth. So not a problem at all. Okay, thank you. And um, Corinne, does your app and dashboard integrate with existing ACD systems? ACD systems? Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I uh, just to make sure what you are referring to uh, to ACD systems. So, if somebody's um, looking at an ACD or let's say an IVR, if they have other technologies, how easy it is to integrate with your products? Uh, it's very easy. Uh, we integrate with uh, any uh, IVR. Um, vendors out there, we have a lot of solutions that, uh, by definition, integrate with IVR um, and with chat platforms. Uh, we have uh, built-in integration within our platform. Okay. Um, and I'd like to ask each one of you, if you're looking at rolling out these type of solutions, um, where does somebody start? So, Jordan, where would somebody start get started with with UJet? In order to to uh, get onboarded onto our platform, is that the Correct. question, Sherry? Yes. Yeah. Um, a, a simple phone call or a web inquiry. We have uh, we have a, a team here of folks who uh, are waiting to talk to you. Um, they can help uh, understand the requirements for your business and how UJet can. Uh, help solve what your pain points are. Um, and then, you know, once customers are onboarded, we have an entire uh, customer success organization that, you know, gives them white glove treatment as far as how to make sure that that process is smooth and that we are tying into, uh, into their existing business solutions and how they approach things to be able to implement UJet in a way where it's most accretive to their business. And what's the most important you think people should know about UJet? Yeah, I mean, I think I think UJet, you know, we're a real-time communication system or platform that uh, is taking advantage of, of modern technology to make it a better experience for customers. And, you know, I touched on this during the presentation. I think it's critically important for people to understand that um, today's customers have changed. And the way that they communicate, the way that they interact, the way that they engage with businesses has changed. And there is a revenue component to that because the stronger the relationship is with the customer and the stronger the brand affiliation is with the customer, the better off you will be. And customer support is a critical component of that. It may not have been 20 years ago, um, but in this day and age, it is the tip of the spear when it comes to how you can deliver uh, a great return on investment in your business. Thank you. Adam, um, getting started with your type of solution, what's the best way to, even when you're thinking about what do the companies need to do to prepare, as well as what's, what do you want everyone to remember about NICE? Uh, so what I'd like you to remember what was specifically about my product is that the adaptive performance management solution is designed in essence to optimize your use of uh, the resources, meaning the, the people resources in your organization, both on the front line, um, at the management level, executive level. So the, the solution is architected to help you optimize there, both in terms of pro proficiency and efficiency. In terms of getting started, uh, on a practical level, of course, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to NICE. In terms of thinking through your approach, I would say you can start with 
what kind of culture you want to be driving in your organization. Most companies have an idea, but a lot of companies are in a state of change these days, um, moving more towards certain KPIs around uh, customer satisfaction and so forth. So I would start with those objectives and then sort of look inward into whether there are any processes, internal processes in place to drive improvement toward those KPIs, and that's how we would get the conversation started. Thank you, Adam. And Corinne, same question to you. Hi, can you repeat the question? Yes, so if somebody wants to get started, what do they need to do? How do they need to prepare to work with Jakarta just take like 30 seconds or so with that, and then another 30 seconds on what's the most important thing you would like them to remember about Jakarta. Okay. Uh, first, they need to contact us. Um, I think that they need to um, identify what is the most painful uh, place when they're interacting with their uh, end, end users, with their customers, and we can uh, do a discovery process to identify the problem and match the perfect solution uh, for them. Um, what I would like them uh, to remember is uh, that we have um, a great uh, easy-to-use platform that enables to solve problems uh, both on the assisted uh, services for the agent and on the self-service for the consumers uh, in a way that is easy and is like a Lego parts that you can use all the parts in all of the channels. Thank you so much. So thank you to Jakarta, to NICE, and to UJET for presenting these solutions. And the recording will be available in roughly 24 hours or so, and you will also get a copy of the um, PDF of the slides with contact information.